What do you think is the source of a lot of these big, egregious, very destructive Marpy asymmetries that we're seeing happening out there? Um, it's hard to say. So uh, obviously some of them can be in the planning, right? So if you have a, a Marpy that is planned with a cant and then you're going to, you're going to worsen it. I think some, how, how is there not oversight to prevent that from happening? Uh, a trillion reasons. Number one, it can be just be the field of view of the CT scan doesn't include enough of the face to diagnose it. But why wouldn't the lab kick something like that back and say, Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's the doctor's responsibility. It's not the lab's responsibility. So at the end of the day, you know, they're designing a MRP. Do you give them everything that they need, which would be a CBCT scan and an intraoral scan, and then you design it. They're 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 not the practitioner. The practitioner is going to be the one that's responsible to make sure that those things are done. And how could a, how could a practitioner allow an oversight like that to occur? I mean, these these problems are are bad. I mean, as a surgeon, you know that, and as a MRP provider, you know some of these asymmetries are so bad that. Even a, a jaw surgery can't correct some of the mid-facial fallout that happens with some of these asymmetries. Just yesterday, I was talking to a, a woman who, who her, the whole side of her face was bulged out as a result of this Marpy expansion. You know, one side was left right where it was. The other side was pretty significantly bulged out. And she was crying on the call with me saying, hey, what do I do about this? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. Um, you know, I think there's also other factors. Um, I've looked at a lot of cases. I think potentially um, hypernumatization of one sinus versus the other. So, for example, one sinus is a lot smaller than the other sinus. I've seen those in a lot of these really bad asymmetry cases. Uh, so, I think just like uh, the density of bone on one side versus the other can be one of the things where even if everything's designed perfectly, they expand asymmetrically because the maxillas have different prop qualities to them. Because uh, I looked at the pre and post ops, the pre op scans, I mean, and I noticed, wow, look at how much more air filled one sinus is compared to the other in this patient. And I saw that in another patient, just a, a running hypothesis. That's interesting. Uh, Never heard that before. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So I mean, I'm, I'm trying to dig into it too, because it's definitely the biggest risk of getting any kind of mid face expansion is, is that, and I'm trying to figure out the, the common variable that's happening in those cases. Um, but uh, there's that there's, you know, there's people are, you know, if you have a native cant, a native asymmetry, and then you expand, it can sometimes just look worse just because they have a bigger arch now. And so it's just more noticeable. Um, there, there's, there's, there's so many little things that can come. You just have to keep a close eye on it and just be prepared to abort, you know? So I, I so I tell patients, like, if you're in that, you know, that unfortunate small percent that that happens to. The good thing is these things are reversible. They obviously can go forward and expand, but you can also reverse them and close back up to where you were and just be prepared to abort if we have to.